Land Rover Defender, rear door. We've already done, we've already had lots of fun with this rear door and we've done the little tailgate release button here. And someone's commented on the video, I'll put a little comment up there. Um, actually, I can't say what his name is because it's sort of Japanese, but hello. What's, what's Japanese for hello? Konnichiwa. There you go. Thank you very much, Kate. He said to me, Simon, he says, what's all this nonsense going on? I said, well, what's, he said, what's that all about? That's, that's like a boot open. Well, obviously they've used the key from something else because a defender doesn't look like that. The back door doesn't open up like a tailgate, but it doesn't work. He said, and I sort of noticed it, but I hadn't really overthought it. I, you know, it unlocks, it locks. This one makes it all go panicky. Um, so that's all fine. But he said, would it be cool if you could make this open the back door? He said, Simon, can you look inside those secret CCF files and have a look whether there's a setting for the remote? And I think I found it. I had a look last night. So we're going to have a quick look. I'm going to get the computer out. I'm going to plug our little cable in and see if I can change it because I think it says, well, we'll have a look what it says, but I think it says um, remote tailgate and on the setting for my car as it is now, it says disabled. Let's see if we change it to enabled, whether it works. But before we do that, let's have a think. Why would Land Rover disable it? So obviously I've got the lowly Model S. Ah, oh, I don't want to hear you all say, ah, oh, poor Simon, he's got the, the base model. And I wonder whether it was just, they put it on the deluxe model. So I'm never quite sure whether it's just because I cheaped out and bought the cheap one or whatever it's, um, but it turns out it's not a thing at all, I don't think. So let's think about this. So normally if you've got a power tailgate on a Range Rover Sport or whatever, it's brilliant because if you've got your, your shopping bags, although it's not that brilliant, it is on my Sport because I can do that wavy leg thing. I can do my, so if I've got my bags full of all my new smart clothes and I've been to the designer outlet, I can do the old, whoosh whoosh and the tailgate opens up and I can put my bags in. Obviously, if you'd gone to reach your remote, I guess you could have one hand and you could do that with the other one and you could do that and it would open up and you do that. But you think about it on a Defender, even if it opens, all it's gonna do is do that. And so you've still got to get your hand out to pull the door open anyway. So if you've got to get your hand out to pull it, it's not much more effort to pull the switch, is it? Um, so I'm not quite sure how you sort of be, but it would be, there is one case. If you were camping inside the car and you didn't want to fit my extra switch here and you wanted to get out the car, you could use the remote or if you were off-road driving and you, were, you couldn't get out your doors, you could then use your remote to get out your back door. So it could be handy, couldn't it, for that? That's the only instance I can think of where that button would be handy. What would be the downside of it? Then we started thinking, Kate and I have been talking about this, because maybe if you, if you opened it um, accidentally, but, but it doesn't, re if you're on a hill, it might sort of gradually swing open, which you might not want. Oh, that could be the bonus feature. If you go shopping, park this side up on the curb every time. We'll have to try that. Should we try that afterwards, Kate? Yeah. Here we go. And, and then at least when you press this, it, would op it might open itself for you. Make sure there's always a curb. A curb, then, just, yeah. Ah, that might work. We'll have a look. So, right, let's get in and have a look at the uh, software. Right, so this is a ODB2 to RJ45 connector. These are cheap as chips off eBay. These are, like, 15, 20 pounds. So there's no coding or anything in this one. Um, I'll, I'll plug that in here. No. No, I am not, unfortunately, going to tell you... Um, how I do this because changing CCF files is potentially dangerous and we only do it for R&D purposes. So I don't really want to get into how we do it and stuff. It is complicated. You've got to do some network stuff and everything. But let me power it up and we'll have a look what it says. Right, so we've looked on the computer and there is a parameter called remote, remote release tailgate and it was set to disable. So we've changed that to enable and we're just reflashing the car now. So it should, it's come back to life. I'll check how it's doing. But whenever you do this, and I'm not encouraging you to do it, make sure you've got a battery charger connected because if you reflash the memory and the battery runs flat, you're in a whole world of trouble. Um, so let me just see. So it's saying it was successful. 
Okay, so we're all done there. All right, should we see if the car starts? I don't like messing around with remotes and locks and stuff. Let's... All right, come on car. Right, so we've got a car. Um, that all seems to be okay. We've got no error messages. So that seems all right. Ignition's on, I got my doors open. All right, service required. Actually, I've got to book it in for service. I might do it myself. Right, so let's, let's leave that now. Um, let's shut and lock the door, shall we? Yeah. And see if it works. Right, we're all shut and... Right, so let's... Everything's shut, right? So let's, let's do all this together. We haven't done this yet. Let me stand here, Kate. The light will be... Right, lock. Locks. Now, we're obviously going to have to unlock it for the tailgate, right? So let's unlock it. All right, let's have a look. Will the tailgate release work? Here it goes. Whoa, check that out! Right, so we've got to go and park it on a slope. Now, let me just see one more thing. If it's locked and we press tailgate release, so there you go, the mirrors are gone in, it's locked. What happens if we just press this on its own? Oh, I wonder, now, I wonder, the interior lights have come on, but look, check that out, the Pivi Pro hasn't come on. Look, so when we're camping, could this be a solution to our camping mode? Because normally when we open the back door, let me show you, let me show you. This, you know, we've got the problem with the current drain and the battery going flat. So let's, let's lock that now. Hold on, it is locked, let's unlock it. Right, I'll lock it. We do a cycle, don't trip over, Kate. Right, right, unlock it. Because normally what I do is I unlock it and then I open this door and I think the Pivi screen comes on. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got a double unlock it. There you go. Right, see the Pivi screen's on. See, we've got the Land Rover logo and the screen boots up. So when I'm camping, oh, that would and that would so save much power, power drain, wouldn't it? Yeah. So when we're camping, we'd only need to do the thing. Have we stumbled? I didn't even mean to do this. Wow. That could be a real power save. I'll, go, I'll put the power save meter on and have a look what the current consumption is. Let's, let's do that. And then we've got to park on a slope, haven't we? Yeah. Let's have a look. Right. Um, so here we go. We have got our fluke ammeter. So we're going to measure, we want to measure power consumption, right? And then I've got to clamp this round the battery cable. All right. And um, as we might need to have the door closed, we can dangle it out here. So at the moment, it's pulling this ridiculously high current of like 13 amps. Um, right, let me, oh. right, so we'll, we'll put that there and we'll, we'll reference that. It's gone down a bit now, 10 amps, but 10 amps at 12 volts is like 120 watts. That's like two old school light bulbs running all the time, but there's nothing on. So we need to get this to go to sleep. So to get it to go to sleep, we've got to double lock it. Okay, but even double locked, you can see it's gone down to eight and we've got to wait about five minutes. So let me leave it five minutes. In fact, let's do the timer now. What time is it, Kate? I've got to get my... It is half three. Half three, right, half three. We'll see how many minutes it takes to go to sleep. Actually, we did plot it. We did plot it here. This is what this is here. It's all a bit complicated, but yeah, it's about four minutes it takes for the um, PIVI screen. And this is the current. Um, it was taking. So it goes up to sort of 14 amps. So we're going to have to wait about four minutes. Mind you, actually, it, then it started to, to dwindle down and it took, it took an extra 11 minutes to actually fall asleep. We were doing that the other day. Um, right, yeah, so we're still on eight amps. So we'll, we'll grab a cup of tea and wait for that to go down. And then what we're going to do is see when we open just the back door, if it takes a minimal current. Oh, I'm excited. Right, okay, we've left it 15 minutes and you can see now the current has dropped to 0 0.3. I think actually that is zero. Um, I think when I, even if I disconnect that, I think it still reads something. So it's definitely well asleep now. Now, what we're gonna try first is opening it with the remote bar, new button. All right, so let's have a go. Let's open it. All right, so that's open that. So the alarm's not going off. So it's allowed me to get in there and get my stuff. The PIVI screen hasn't come on. Let's have a look what the power consumption is now. Oh, it's 5.6. 
Now, obviously the interior lights have come on um, and we have got the extra interior light, but the power consumption from that is minimal, but that's better than 10, isn't it? It's only the rear interior. The In rear. fact, let me just, uh, can you just shut that door? Shut that door. You don't know that, you don't know that saying, do you? No. No, Larry Grayson, right. Um, so the interior lights, have they turned off yet? They've turned off. So it's still pulling 5.8 even with it closed and there's no interior lights on. But what I wanted to show you was if I do the proper unlock, so let's do the proper unlock, bear in mind it's still locked. If I do the proper unlock, okay, and then open a door, see it's 10 amps. So we've cut, we've half the problem. So that's good. Right, I've just got to drive and park it on a slope now. Right, we've put it on a slope to represent a curb. We're hoping we'll release it with our new tricky release and that it'll gently swing away. What's the chances? Let's have a go. Fingers crossed. Hold up, I pressed the wrong button. There you go. There we go. There we go, look. Defender, automatic, remote, key, lock. All you need to do is park on a slope. You can walk up, bags full, job done. Good luck with that. Right, one thing Mrs. Powerful's just said, said, that's great, you've locked your car. There you go, the mirrors have gone in, right? Um, and you, you open your boot, because you're camping, and you set your stove up, and you do all the stuff, and you're dead happy because your battery's not draining so fast, and you've put your keys down, and then you go, oh, right, and you shut your door. Now look, did you hear that? Bing, bing. It won't let you lock your keys in the car. Well, it appears not to. Whereas it's still locked, look, the mirrors are still folded in, but if you've got your keys out, okay, it flashes, car's locked. It's dead clever. So, so far, we can't find too many problems. And look, uh, we brought it back here. We haven't put it up on a curb, but it's slightly downhill. And look, look, watch this. It still does the auto open. So as long as you're slightly downhill, it'll do the auto open. But disclaimer, well, if you bash into something, don't come chasing me. Good luck with that.